Next on Impactful Teachers, I'm going to talk about Aubrey Dean Durst. I first met him at Rock Valley College in 1998. He was head of the music department there. I had previously saw him at a, a concert I attended that I was not part of, I think in 97 or 98, for the, uh, the I forget what it was called, it was a choir that met at nighttime. But um, we had no association, no interaction then. He became my teacher later for my first two years at Rock Valley. Uh, I first had him for classroom piano, and then I had him for choir. Oh, I also had him for music theory. And he taught oral skills, uh, where you learn to develop your ear training and uh, musical pitch and reading things rather than learning about how music works. He also taught voice. I think he may have taught another instrument, but I don't remember what it was. And he was heavily involved with the musical contributions to theater, with Starlight Theater and with Studio Theater. It was, a, I'd say, around 50-ish, balding, older gentleman. We all knew him as Dean. He didn't go by Aubrey. He went by Dean, or Mr. Durst. And at that time I met him, I was a little too immature for the situation in which we met. <clears throat> um, I was 18, and I knew everything. I was combative, I was not willing to listen to other people or accept any ideas that were not my own, and he needed someone who was, he needed a student who was humble and controllable and willing to learn things, and that simply was not me at that age. I also sang for him in Chamber Singers in that first semester, and it was not a fun experience. Some rather bad planning happened that really ruined the experience. I don't remember a whole lot about the repertoire, but what really stands out for me as being as part of Chamber Singers were two things. First, we wore Renaissance clothing for our performances. Uh, we, I had done this previously in Madrigal Choir in high school, but the costumes were definitely of a lower quality and not as great, not, not, not as much imagination. I was given this enormous overcoat, you just pull it over the head and put your arms in the sleeves and it's on. And it was gaudy, it was gold and red, and it looked like someone had stitched together two bedspread covers. It was an ugly thing and I hated it, and it definitely made me look like I weighed a lot more than I actually did. And my peers laughed at me when I wore it, and they were not the most supportive bunch. I was also not as good a singer as I thought I was, because what was really good in high school did not necessarily translate to really good in college. And I had difficulty reconciling those, that, 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 uh, that difference. The other thing that stood out was uh, a big mistake, well, I, I, I term it a mistake, others may not. Chamber singers were dropped into a program called Splendor and Majesty at the end of 1998. It was held at the Coronado Theater, directed by Mike Webb. It was, a, you may consider it, a, a wintertime Starlight Theater production, even though it was not a Starlight, it was at the Coronado. And we were just randomly dropped into it, presumably because, because Dean was also a music director for both things. Now, it was not part of the syllabus, it was not in the course description, I did not sign up for Splendor and Majesty, and I was not having fun. By the third performance, I dropped out of it. I just stopped altogether. I got a, a very not nice lecture from, from Dean about that. And 98 had been a very difficult year for me. At the end of that year, 
uh, we got into we got into ninety nine, and uh, Carol Ostrom, the the accompanist at the college, uh, quite casually and kindly wished me a happy new year, and I said it better be or heads will roll because ninety eight was a pretty horrible year for me, and. Uh, this that remark I made was not directed at any one person in particular. Certainly, at least certainly not least of all Carol, because uh, I had no animosity or ill will toward her. But she went and told Dean about it. Now, '98 had been a difficult year with uh, my last semester of high school and the Mercado and uh, an underwhelming graduation and a very dull summer followed by a, my my first adult job, uh, which was very bad. The, the difficult production of Twelfth Night, and then getting into college, and then chamber singers, and all that nonsense, all that drama was just too much for me. So I expected, yeah, it better be a happy new year, or someone's going to pay for it this time, because I had enough. Anyway, she went and told Dean about it, and he said, I will go to the powers that be and have you removed from this school. Really an inappropriate response for an offhand remark that was actually kind of justified. It was not directed at Carol, it was not directed at Dean, it was not directed at any one person in particular, but he took great offense to it. And maybe she did too. In 99 I started working on my production of Thespis. It was my first production and I needed some help in locating singers and performers, uh, mus uh, musicians for the orchestra for it. And um, Dean was of absolutely no help. He said I had not paid my dues and would not explain what that meant. And he wasn't very supportive of my ambition. Now at 18, how could he be? I had no education. I was 18. But uh, also, don't forget, I knew everything. And I... I, I I steamrolled on with it anyway and completed Thespis in June of 99. And then I had my first stage production, The Princess's Lament, in the summer, of, uh, in August of 99. Went back to school for my second year and I told Dean about all these, the, these two great things that I had done in spite of overwhelming uh, adversity. And he was not encouraged. And was not supportive either. But he was pretty upset that I was, quote, bugging the whole town about Thespis, which I had to do because I was just a startup and uh, I uh, needed help. I needed to search in every corner to find everything that I needed to do that and to do it well because I didn't want it to be a disaster. Unfortunately, it was because I could not get the help I wanted, but that's irrelevant. It has nothing to do with Dean. Um, after I walked out on Splendor and Majesty in 98, I was dropped from Chamber Singers. I was not to continue. But I had successfully auditioned for Julius Caesar at the, the Studio Theater, and I was given bit parts in that, because there are a lot of parts in it. And uh, it was going better. Things were working out better. So, with that in mind, I went and auditioned for Chamber Singers for the second year. And I sang a song from The Sorcerer for my audition. And when I had finished singing... All right, here, direct quote from my biography. After I sang my song, he confronted me with his conditions for my participation. He said, What kind of guarantee do I have that it will be a different experience this time? I heard you had some trouble with the theater, too, and the way you were bugging everyone about your opera last spring really upset a lot of people. And then there's the matter of splendor and majesty that you walked out on. I want some assurance that if I include you in this again, you will act like an adult and be more humble. Now, I knew something of that order was going to happen. He was going to bring that up at my audition and maybe even stop my audition, no, to cancel it in the middle of it because of, because of what I just read here. And I was, I was well prepared for this. I actually had something prepared in advance in case this came up. So, here's what I responded <clears throat> with. Here's what I responded with. 
What kind of guarantee do I have that this will be a different experience? I began nervously. Last year, I suffered verbal abuse and insults repeatedly from both you and your students and people in the theater department. And while I admit I was not the best students, I have been lucky to get many second chances. I'm participating in the Shakespeare play at the theater and I'm doing well in it. However, I don't appreciate you stalking me. We'll come back to that later. And I certainly don't want to sign up for another year of back talk, rudeness, and being made to participate in programs I didn't sign up for, and being made to wear a ridiculous getup that looks like a bedspread. And he went silent. He was absorbing that, and I think he recognized it. Now, that said, I am asking you for a second chance, and surely you must realize that by my being here, I am giving you one also. I want to sing in this group, and I want to replace the earlier bad experience with something more positive and productive. Strangely, he accepted that, and I was in Chamber Singers for that second semester. And it was much better that time. We sang a rock setting of In the Beginning, we did Nonna Tempo, something in Italian. I remember began with Nona Temple, and there was a bluesy setting of Solitude, which I really liked. And that is all I remember of Chamber Singers from that semester. And I did replace that earlier bad experience with a much better one in the second semester. But I did not do a third semester, I just chose not to, because I had achieved the goal I set out to do. Later on, in 2000, I produced The Sapphire Necklace, a new opera that I had written, and the performance had gone very badly. Uh, one of his students was cast as the, the tenor for the character for that show, and he bailed on me the morning of the production. Now, I did not fault Dean for this, but I let him know that his student bailed on me. and. Dean was absolutely unsupportive and reminded me of Splendor and Majesty and also asked me what it was I did to, to make him bail on me, like as, as if it were my fault. And he was not present at all. He knew nothing about it. I thought that was very really disrespectful. And I... At that point, I think I got frustrated enough to stop taking any of his courses, or any of his bullshit. Because in music theory, we were seeing each other instead of in choir. And he would make passive-aggressive remarks in front of everybody about my compositions, about my mistakes, about my interests. He actually said, in front of everybody, for, with, with no provocation at all, that uh, I should go to the Dean of Students and make a huge complaint about how awful this music program is, and then they, the music people, the other people in the music theory class, like all six of them, and, and Dean, would write me a nice letter and thank me for my input. I honestly don't know. The man was a, was a bit of a mystery. I think what we saw was um, we saw ourselves in the other person. Stubborn, didn't like taking anything from anybody, ambitious, and uh, just generally abrasive towards each other. You know how you, you meet somebody and you instantly do not like them? It was kind of like that with Dean and me. He also gave me the postcard that I sent away to Northern Illinois University for information to enroll in the school after we'd had three years together at Rock Valley. And that was what, it got, got me, that was what sent me to that university. And I had a thoroughly miserable experience there. So I do hold him partly responsible for that because he put the idea in my head that I can go to this school. And, well, look how it turned out. I'm responsible for how it turned out, certainly. And so are some other people, like Bob Sims or Myron Myers or Jim Tucker, who will also have videos on this channel. Just to name a few. But uh, he certainly gave me the motive to go to that school. And 
it wasn't worth it. So yeah, I do hold him a little responsible for it. Dean also had some peculiar traits that I really did not like. He would constantly talk about noodle knowledge, or um, if a student just suddenly stopped coming to class, they either died or went to Texas, <laughs> which I thought was a little inappropriate for whatever reason, and usually neither were the case. He had too much fondness for the Sibelius chords, which, uh, okay, and um, a little too much John Rutter in his library. I remember doing a studio recording, I think in 99, or maybe it was 2000, it was with the choir, with the men's choir, and we sang Down in the Valley. Down in the valley, valley so low. That song. We sang that for a time capsule thing that Rock Valley was doing at the time, and he was a real bitch about it. He would often bring up individual voices, and um, then it was, there was so much unnecessary stress and overshaping to get the perfect 100% choral blend, which is an ideal to live up to, but is definitely, really is not a destination because it can produce some interesting results. And you know, when a chorus is made up of individuals, then individual voices are about to be heard. There is something to be said for blending, there is something to be said for a unified choral sound. That is a good thing. But we were all college kids, so take it easy. It didn't need to be like that. And there is such a thing as editing in the studio, and he didn't, he didn't seem to be aware of that either. It was not a fun experience. Now we get to the part, how was he impactful? He was the first music teacher I had out of high school, and there was a lot of unnecessary combat between us. I'm not sure what his problem was, but I do know what mine was, and maybe his response, his was just a response to that. But it taught me that I have to have higher standards for college. I also have to recognize that I'm no longer in the safe, cocooned world of high school. I'm now in the real world, as if high school were the fake world. And uh, now I have to deal with adult th issues. Even if I am a young adult, I'm only 18. I have to contend with teachers who are, who are years experienced. They have tenure, they can do whatever they want, they're multifaceted. And <clears throat> college was supposed to prepare me, community college, should, excuse me, community college is supposed to prepare one for university life. Some people don't go on to that, others do, others start at university, doesn't matter. But community college and working with Dean Durst did not prepare me for the onslaught of abuse that I got at the university. And when I came back in 2003, after two horrible years at university, I was relieved to see that Dean had retired, because I was not looking forward to going back to the abuser. I wouldn't say abuser is the right word, now that I've said it, I wouldn't say that's the right word at all. It was more of an instigator, and some of the combat we had was really quite nonsensical. He... I remember a music theory lesson, and um, he asked, he didn't ask me to come up to the, the, the dry erase board. He demanded I go up there and I write out, I write out some, uh, a, a clef, and a key, and the time signature, and some other things that I don't really recall. And all I did was ask him if he could say please. His reaction was to kick me out of class. 
Like, no, basic courtesy is not a crime. And he did not have basic courtesy on a lot of occasions for no reason. And I think that's what made, what, what rubbed me the wrong way. How, this was, how was this impactful? I expected this man to be my ally because we had a similar interest. He could definitely play piano, he could definitely sing, he could definitely conduct. He did have some questionable choices in repertoire, <clears throat> like the Benjamin Britten Gloriana dances, which were absolutely awful to sing. Some really stupid lyrics in here. I wish he hadn't chosen because it's still stuck in my mind. Um, there was some Vaughn Williams, which was fine. There was a lot of John Rutter. It was okay, okay. But we would also do uh, masterworks, a uh, long oratorios or cantatas by, uh, by uh, Baroque composers. There was some Haydn, there was some Handel, there was some Mozart. There was, um, no, that, well, that's enough examples. I do not remember what it was called, but one of them had a passage that uh, he demonstrated in rehearsal to teach timing to the singers. He pulsed a note, a, 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 what we call, sometimes call a run, because it's a lot of notes that all go together in sequence. Uh, this would be, I'll explain this in a sec. And um, unfortunately, what he taught them to help them learn it was um, something that got into performance. At performance, I could still hear some of the singers um, performing it as this passage as or fallen, 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 something like that. And it sounded really stupid when it should have been all one fall. Because that was how he taught it to us. I remember there was also another, um, I think, Cantate Domino. And he taught, he did the same thing, but it was Cantata, ta, 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 as pulsing the beat. And there were still people who were doing that in performance. So some of his methods were definitely questionable. He also had bad grammar. He would say, um, he would say a augmented chord when it's an augmented chord and would not be corrected. Just to name one example, I'd have to look back in the book for others and I don't want to read your selections from my biography. But suffice it to say, he was not a fun teacher to have. He might have been for other people, but I do not have good memories of him. In fact, I can't say I have too many positive memories of him because he was frequently explosive and inappropriately so for uh, certain situations. Did not meet me on my level, did not teach me anything. I learned a couple of vocalises from him that I used myself for, no for a number of years, but that was it. Mm. So where's the impact here? Maybe there isn't one. Maybe there isn't one. Man, in that case, I just wasted like 12 minutes making this video. Maybe 20. I'm not, I don't have a timer on this side. No, I'm, I'm just going to stop now.